Welcome to another episode of Assertiveness, the show that gives ordinary people the space to talk about things that really, really matter. We do not discuss the cliche topics on the show. We talk about things that, you know, touch you and I every day. The other day I was telling people, I don't understand why people don't buy pampers in bulk. Because if you're going to have kids in the next few years, why don't you buy them now? Because they're cheaper than they'll be. Anyway, no, never mind. So uh, anyway, today I'm joined in studio to discuss innovation, to discuss South Africans that are making a very big difference in the world of just trying to change SA. There's a saying that goes something like, if you want to see the change, be the change, whatever. It's, 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 I'm not deep like that, so I wouldn't really know what the saying is. But without further ado, yes, I can speak English. Let's get to meet the guests. Let's get to understand where they come from, who they are, what do they do, what are they known for. I know we've got a lecturer from the University of Pretoria in studio today, and we have a 17 year old. So I'd like everybody who is above the age of 17 to look at their lives and just analyze what you have done since you were born to where you are right now because what this gentleman is going to tell you is going to blow your mind anyway let's get hi and welcome thank you thank you and let's find out who you are where you're from what do you do let's actually see because you're a lecturer you're a lecturer at the university of pretoria if you can also tell us what you do for fun because i'm just thinking academics in and mm -hmm. out every day i feel sorry for your wife <laughs> like is it every day so yeah who are you yes yeah, so my name is dr herman maybach i'm a senior lecturer at the university of pretoria in the department of electrical electronic and computer engineering i'm also part of a company a spin-out company um year called year screen we started as a well the research started at the university and we came up with the idea of uh, performing hearing tests using a smartphone because these days all of us have smartphones in our pockets and um, so obviously with the boom in technology the past few years you know the smartphones processing capabilities um, are, 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 are you know um, compared to you know five years ago as uh, supercomputers so we decided to because there's a real great need um, to you know for access to hearing health care not only in the country but in the world so um, uh, around 360 million people have uh, hearing loss, you know, hearing problems. And in our country, um, around 2% 2, 2 of children have de de debilitating hearing loss. It means that they will struggle learning, they will struggle, you know, concentrating in class and getting information through. And, and later in life, if that pro uh, problem isn't addressed, um, they, will, they will really um, have problems, you know, in, in terms of socializing, you know, um, vocational, vocational um, stability and, and so forth. So, um, yeah, what I do for fun is, uh, well, I'm a researcher, so um, okay. my, my, my work is sort of the thing I love. Um, this is not the only thing that I do research. <laughs> that still sounds like work to me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, this is not the only thing that I do research in. I also do research in artificial intelligence. My background is in artificial intelligence and wireless communication systems. So uh, about two and a half years ago, um, I met up with my co-inventor of Year Screen, mm -hmm. Professor David Swanepoel, and he's the audiologist. So he contacted me and he says, like, um, there's, there's a great need for this in, in the country and in the world. So we started with a project and we, we uh, did some research and developed the concept of, uh, you know, doing hearing screening and hearing testing on, on a smartphone. And the results were very promising and up until this point we've published uh, three uh, journal articles in top um, audiology, audiology um, journals where we show that our device uh, compares very well, in fact in some cases actually better than current conventional screening audiometry. So um, yeah, no, we started with this project and what we developed is a smartphone hearing screening solution. It's not just a device because we can take this into the communities, into the people's homes and anyone can actually use it because it's so easy to use. We actually developed it so that illiterate people can use it. So um, the idea is that you can, can screen anyone anyway. It's, 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 it's the kind of test that um, they, they, they still perform in, in schools using these large big, cumbersome, very expensive audiometric equipment. Um, with our device, it is a smartphone. Maybe I can just... Hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we get to what the actual device does, we just want to get the introductions out of the way. And now we know that you've, what you do for fun is research. I feel like there's a sports team that you support. There must be. Well, I do love my rugby and cricket, as all South Africans do. Um, so, no, I, I definitely don't just do research and work. Um, but 
I love working with the students and I love I love being at the university. Obviously, I can go out there, do something else, but I really feel that that's where I should be. And then also in a project like this, being involved in a project like this um, really fulfills you in another way because you know that this project is being used in communities, it's changing people's lives. And that's what you really want. That's what, re what really fulfills you. Yeah. And which team do you support? The rugby team? Local? Local. Um, I support the Bulls. Yay! Oh, you also. I mean, I'm in Lions country now. Yeah? I'm in Lions country. Yeah. The Lions is, is, is the Johannesburg team, right? No, I don't care what the Johannesburg team is. We are still Bulls supporters. Okay. Through and through. Okay. And awesome. Okay. I like you already. Mm -hmm. So we, we, you can stay. <laughs> Hello. Hello, how are you? How are you? Good and you? You're 17? Yes. Jeez, you make us all look at our lives and we're like, what are you doing, Nicolette? This can't be it. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, you know, what do you do? Um, my name is Jean Jacques now. I'm 17. I'm currently doing grade 11, or my final papers now. Um, I invented a concept that has been patented and all. Um, that's an embedded chip in your number plates. The minute that it can link to your cell phone and your car. The minute you overspeed um, the speed limit, you'll get a notification in your car and on your phone saying, um, Jean, please slow down. You're now transgressing the law. We need you to um, skip, um, keep to the speed limit. And if not, you'll get a fine. Um, main reasons why I did it was that um, me and my dad, we were on our way to Polokwane and we saw a Ferrari going past. And he was going at least 220. And I'm not jealous of the Ferrari. <laughs> I won't lie, it, a Ferrari is a nice car, we all want a Ferrari. Yeah. But the fact that he was going 220 and he saw it speeding a, a traffic official and he immediately just went back to 120 and the minute we went past him, he went back to 200. Um, I looked at my dad and I said, Dad, we have a problem here. He's like, what son? He's like, no, I don't think that's fair, even though they has Ferrari and that. <laughs> I just don't think that's fair that the normal man um, compared to a wealthier man has a different link in society. You know, he can break the laws in a different way and yeah. that a man, normal working society member can also break maybe in a different way as well. Yeah. But the fact that I looked in further and as a 12 year old, it was kind of weird. My dad Sorry, wait, you were 12 when the, all this happened? All this happened, yes. So it was, my dad didn't understand, or oh, he always supported me through what I was doing. So he made me look at the stuff, draw pictures for him. He just looked at it. He said, like, okay, I think we have an idea. Yeah. So the fact that I looked into the stats and the fact that South African government loses 306 billion rand a year. Yeah, for, for road safety. For, for road safety. And the fact that 20,000 people die. The thing is, like, I say always that we kill more people on our roads than we kill in Iraq each year. Sure. And the fact that it's a controversial topic that fees must fall is that government, the government needs about 70 billion rand left. And the fact that even though if we can halve that 306 billion, then there's money for fees. There's money for fees. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. You're, you're very clever. Because <laughs> I'm like, at 12, you're already thinking about these kind of things. It's now you're finding solutions. We need people like you in government. But now tell me, with, when you're not busy saving the world or finding solutions for the world, what do you do what, you know, for fun? I like playing football. Okay. I used to play for the University of Pretoria, the mm -hmm. under 17 team. And then I used to play for the Tuck Sport High School. And then I moved now so I can focus more on my product. Are you ever going to play for the country? Are you going to come help Bafana Bafana? <laughs> Maybe that's what you should be doing. Finding us an innovative way to make Bafana Bafana a bit better. Mm. You don't, don't, don't you think? Maybe put a special chip in their boot or something. Yeah, Shoot. to tell them where to go. Yeah, link it to an earpiece and then it tells them where to run to because they just run like a bunch of schoolgirls. But in case we're not there, <laughs> today is not the day for us to be there. Anyway, okay, so you create it's what, what's, what's it called? Smart Plate. Smart Plate. Awesome. Okay, so SA Innovation Awards. What is that about? How do you find that about these kind of things? Is it because you guys are in the space of creating innovative things? That's how you find out about our oh, personally, I don't know about these things. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. Maybe because you're not innovating, you're not creating anything. <laughs> I guess if you, uh, I guess if you're busy uh, with uh, doing innovation and being an entrepreneur, then um, you know you, you sort of look out for these kinds of opportunities. Yeah. And being at a university, we also get updates from the research office okay. about all of these events. So yeah, we just um, 
We just sent in our information and we, we won the, the, the social innovation category. So you won the social innovation category. Are there different categories? Yes, there are. There are a few different categories. Which one did you win in? Uh, no, no, I came, I was a finalist. You were a finalist. You were a finalist and you didn't win? Yeah. Who won? <laughs> like, I'm like, what did they create? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. load shading, maybe <laughs> some. Okay, so that, that, for, okay, so let's, let's, let's get back to it. You guys won for here screen, right? Yes. Now, I want to get an understanding of what made you guys better than everyone else, in your opinion. Obviously, we all have our own opinions. Yes. For, I, I, I want to get an understanding, okay, before, before actually you answer that question, mm -hmm. what is the social category? What are they looking out for? Yes, they are looking for, for innovations that can obviously bring change um, you know, on a societal and social level to, okay. to change people's lives. In our case, we, we are making an impact in, in urine screening detection, early urine screening detection. And it's very important, um, as I mentioned earlier, to detect it very early on. Yeah. Because if, if the child reaches grade 5, 6, 7 and, and you're only detecting it then, then it would be so far behind you know, educationally. Um, so it's very important to detect it very early because there's a lot of things that you can do. Just the fact that you can maybe move the child from the, from the back to the front yes. uh, makes a massive difference in that child's learning abilities. Because, you know, the t teacher can just maybe think that that child, uh, you know, is, has attention deficit, deficit disorder or is not, uh, or is just not, you know, but, yeah. but just moving him to the front is, is the first step and then you know if this is a real big problem then then, then we can anal analyze this hearing and and possibly providing with a with a hearing aid i want to ask you something very controversial <laughs> but i'm going to keep it to myself for now i'm going to ask you later on so okay so you guys one in the social in the social category because yes. you guys have created something that brings social change mm -hmm. so in other words you guys your your main focus mainly is for underprivileged people, you know, those kind of um, societies. Yes, look, um, in the 2012 Integrated School Health, Health Policy, it states that um, the government has to screen uh, more than 1 million, it's actually 1.1 million grade 1 um, learners um, screen their hearing and currently they are doing less than 10% of that. So there's a great need and a, and a, and a large gap um, to fill. So we want to go in there and we want, we want every school to have our device because then the teachers can screen the, the children themselves it's, it's that easy mm -hmm. and um, it's not just a screening our solution offers a referral system so if if we go out and we screen a school then we can refer we firstly send SMS to the to the children's parents okay. so that they know they have been they have been screened mm -hmm. um, and they might be a problem and then we also uh, inform the school about the closest um, hearing health care provider so that they can make sure that the, the, the learners actually get the health care that they need. So it's not just a device, it's a whole solution. It's from identifying the problem to actually closing the loop by providing, you know, linking them with the health care providers. And then um, to, to control the quality of the test, we obviously we've automated the test, so there's no manual tuning of knobs like it used to be. Um, it's all automated and we continually or continuously uh, monitor the environmental noise to, to ensure that the test is in fact valid and that's what we showed through our publications that it is clinically valid compared to the current screening audiometry. Much cheaper, it's about five times cheaper if you look at current screening of audiometry it starts from 30, 40,000 up until it could go up to 100,000 for one device you need training, mm -hmm. you need to record results by hand, our device does everything it pushes all the information into the cloud, we have a cloud based server um, that w where we manage the information, we can do reporting. So it's a whole solution, really. You said something very important. You said you guys are closing the loop, which is which was going to lead to my controversial question that I'm going to ask you later. Still, that you know, I hear people come up with these amazing things, but okay, we've identified the problem. What then? So I, I really like that, sir, Mr. Number Plates. Now, now I want to get an understanding of. You said you were you were a finalist. In which category were you a finalist? Um, SME Innovator of the Year. SME Innovator of the Year, so that small, micro, yeah, that, that, that one. Okay, so how, now, I, I want to get an understanding of this, this device that you've created. Yes. So the device gets put on a number plate? No, the, the thing is we, we've like have a whole, as you said, we also have a whole solution, is that the fact that we have a whole manufacturing plant, yeah. um, the device cannot be taken out of the number plate. Oh, so you actually are it's making it part of the number plate? Part of the number plate. Okay, you okay. You stick onto the number plate and you go. You can stick to take off? Yes. Okay, that means you need to integrate with 
Is it who who makes number plates? Is it government or is it car manufacturers? No, um, like you can say, like you can get your a number plate. I think by um, any locksmith and all of that. Oh, so you you can get a number plate made by anyone. It's just a registering that. And the thing is that we look at this as also job creation. Yes. So the fact the fact that like we can build a factory, make more jobs for people, and also for the youth as well. Um, but the fact that we can make people more aware of what is happening on our roads. The thing is, what we said was that the fact that drunk driving is the biggest thing yeah. in South Africa. And the fact that like, if I, no, not me, I'm not old enough to drink. <laughs> 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 That's very clever. That's a good save. <laughs> okay. My mother's watching. <laughs> okay. um, I just want like a man goes to drink, he has, he's drunk the, um, the day and yeah. the psychological impact that people say is that when you are drunk you feel like you're going 30 but you're actually going 180 and you, feel, and you feel brave you feel brave one is like a Michael Schumacher there yeah. okay and the fact that I think if you wake up the next morning and you got five fines on your name and you have a court interdict to say please come verify why you were speeding yeah so you can still verify why you're speeding. So say, for instance, you had to rush your mother to the hospital. Mm. Oh no, I would rush my mother quickly to the hospital so the ambulance didn't come. But you can still get a doctor's letter saying, we, um, I was at the doctor's, I had to rush my mother from point A to point B because of this. Mm. And the fact that we can say, why were you, what were you doing between this time? Because we want to know. Um, and if he says, no, I was just speeding. And um, the fact that, I just wanted to speed. Then he yeah, doesn't have a case to support himself. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, we want them to pay his fi their fines because I think there's about um, four billion rand outstanding fines still. Yeah. In South Africa, we don't pay fines. It's a pay pay when I get caught. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, like we also in included a it's a system called Cloud Bank. So okay. it's a system on your phone that you can pay the fine immediately. Okay, but you you are then doing away with a lot of what is currently existing. Is is ultimately what you're trying to move to, trying to move South Africa from the I don't want to call it the rubbish innate system that they currently have, but that we got to call a spade a spade. It is rubbish because you can't get people to pay, so it's it's ineffective. So you're bringing in a, a more effective system. Now my question, what's busy knocking in my head is, how are you gonna get? people to buy the number plate that's got this embedded chip is it now going are you, are you trying to get it to become law that these are the number plates that people must you know procure or car you know the vw's of this world these are the ones that they must fit onto their cars when they sell to people how are you going to get them what is have you thought of that um we looked at two sectors private sector and, and public sector um, the fact that we can go into a public sector is with, we wanted to do a pilot project now. Mm -hmm. um, we want to monitor maybe about 10,000 vehicles and see what we took off that database and how we can do this. And then on that steps, maybe government can look and say, we want to put this as a legislative yeah. thing that we must do because it's ridiculous. Yeah. If I lose 306 billion rand a year, I'm sure it's going to affect me and 20,000 people are going to be gone. So. But remember, gov government doesn't government doesn't think like you and I. <laughs> they don't think about what is right. They think about will the people that we give it to still vote for us <laughs> if we vote. I've met I've met some good people mm. in government, and I think no, and it's not just me because I want, for instance, yes. I want this to happen. But the thing is, they see there is an impact happening in South Africa, and they're not they're not saying we don't want this. Mm. Do we want to say that we want a solution? And I'm bringing a solution towards the, the problem. Definitely. Okay, we're going to go for a quick ad break. When we come back, I want us to discuss a little bit more about hair screen and smart plates. I want us to get into more deep now to say, okay, so this is, you guys must now demonstrate for me to say, this is how this thing works. I know you've brought your, your uh, little carry pack device is going to show exactly how it works but i want us to speak a little bit more again on on smart plates and how we're going to force we're not going to ask now we're telling government you are doing this and we're going to hope that they're going to be watching when this episode is that we're going to do this and this is how it's going to work let's take a quick ad break